All right, let's uh, reconvene. Uh, we're going to go to the sinking fund, I believe. <laughs> or are we eternal okay. service fund? I think we're at sinking fund. Well, yeah. We didn't do internal service funds. We well, you have, you've done them. Yeah, we way. did print shop, we did storeroom, we did telephone exchange. Sinking fund is an internal Sinking fund is an internal fund. service fund. The, okay. the operations is. So, we have this is why I never internal service, internal service, service fund. That service. Yeah, so I think all we have is we've already done several of the internal service funds. The print shop, storeroom, okay. telephone that's exchange. So that's a... Uh, Another way around. Okay. And I would, I think, it might make sense because everything else is sinking fund related up until the rainy day fund. So we read all of them in until. So okay. Read this one, this one, this one, this one in. Okay. All the debt related. All right. So, Ms. Saban, if you could, we're going to go, and if you could read sinking fund commission. Revenue bond debt service, debt service revenues and expenditures, and debt service unvoted tax supported obligations. If you can read all of those, because all of those are pertaining to the uh, sinking fund. Okay. Uh, page 448, sinking fund general operations. Uh, sinking Fund Commission, Justin Bibb, President, Ab Ahmed Abunama, Secretary, Blaine Griffin, Member, Elizabeth Ruby, Assistant Secretary, <coughs> page 450, Salaries and Wages, 2022 unaudited, 186,421, 2023 budgeted, 226,238, total expenditures, 2022 unaudited, 722,305. 2023 budgeted, 1,016,788. Page 451, number of employees, December 2022, two. Budgeted 2023, two. And, uh, page 437, um, revenue bond debt service. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything to read on oh. that. No, there's no. Nothing there. Oh, sorry. Uh, four, wait. Debt service revenues on page 439. Sorry, I'm not exactly sure what I'm reading for the revenue debt service. Uh, okay, but 439, debt service revenue 2022 unaudited. 82,780,382, 2023 budgeted, 87,936,383, 383 uh, debt service expenditures on page 441, 2022 unaudited, 82,780,383, 2023 budgeted, 87,936,383, and page 440, Two unvoted tax supported obligations. Um, twenty twenty three principal twenty eight million four hundred fifty five thousand. Twenty twenty three interest fourteen million four hundred fifty two thousand three hundred thirty eight. And and chairman, are we doing rainy day? Or am I stopping there? No, we'll go to rainy day next. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're doing everything between sinking fund commission all the way through debt service, unvoted tax supported obligations. Chief and uh, Ms. Ruby. Uh, the sinking fund is the uh, citywide coordinator for the issuance and payment of all the city's debt. <clears throat> this includes general, ob <clears throat> general obligation bonds, subordinate lien income tax bonds, special revenue debt and non-tax revenue bonds. Um, there's two of us in the sinking fund, my assistant Lori Ernest and myself. Um, we reconcile all the city's bank accounts related to the city's debt. Um, we make sure that we maintain all the records of the outstanding debt for the city and ensure that funds are available when needed for the payment of the principal and interest. 
And then another area is compliance, which we ensure that the city complies with all the covenants that are in the general bond ordinance, the sinking fund ordinance, and in the indentures for the various enterprise funds. Uh, we also coordinate the submission of continuing disclosure information pursuant to the city's continuing disclosure agreements in accordance with the SEC Rule 15C212. And we also facilitate the required um, arbitrage rebate calculations, which are required by federal regulations. Okay, so pretty straightforward, and your budget is pretty straightforward. So I don't have many questions for this. Uh, I think, Mr. Harsh, you have a question? Yeah, um, through the chair to, I'm sorry, uh, Ruby. Secretary Ruby. Um, so I, I'm also still trying to track down the, the money that was raised for the, um, the police headquarters. Is that in the bond sales that are here on, I mean, on page 437 seems to be the uh, enterprise fund bonds. Um, so where would we see the bond sales for the uh, these headquarters? Um, Chairman, to the councilman, the, the bond sales um, for the headquarters were out of subordinate lien income tax bonds, of which we have <coughs> a, a multitude of them. Um, page uh, 440 has the debt service that's due this year mm -hmm. at the bottom of that page. Um, um, the debt service that is due on subordinate lien income tax bonds, which is partially the police headquarters and all the other years of subordinate lien debt that we have issued okay at the bottom of page 440 and top of 441 <coughs> subordinate lien yeah. tax bonds okay so that's the debt service right um, and does your department through the chair collect the 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 bond sales revenue as well or just the the debt service on do you just deal with the debt service on it <coughs> I'm sorry I'm not a financier and this gets uh, complicated for for layman like me but my understanding is that you sort of administer the bonds the, what comes in and what goes out and the sinking fund yeah. is what we pay uh, back that we owe. Um, yeah, that the bond proceeds that came in on each of the issuances are in capital projects in ca and a project set up for that purpose. Yeah, so through the, through the <laughs> chair, so when the, you know, in advance of each sale of bonds, there are a series of ordinances uh, adopted by council uh, authorizing a the sale of the bonds and then the projects that'll, that will be paid for with the proceeds of that sale. Okay. When, once the bonds uh, are sold, uh, the capital uh, budget manager in finance, uh, Tina Magistro, she sets up individual project accounts for each capital project that is being uh, paid for with the proceeds of the debt. And that money is uh, allocated to each project and then she manages the budget of all okay. of that work, um, keeping track of what's been spent, what hasn't been spent, um, which is helpful on the sinking fund side because as part of our uh, federal compliance obligations, their <coughs> obligations suspend the proceeds within a certain amount of time. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will continue to struggle to understand the pots of money and the allocated funds um, in the city because um, it's, it's something I would like to fully wrap my head around, but I'm getting closer. Um, last thing then, just an update for our policy research team. Um, could we please look into public records request PO26526-110921 Dash one one zero nine two one filed January of last year. It's over a year old. Filed by Mark Ackerman from WEWS TV, uh, requesting a department of uh, a list of all employees and department phone numbers, including city issued cell phones, as well as a public request P zero 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 nine one one dash zero one one zero two three filed by Scott Knoll from WEWS um, January tenth of this year uh, regarding homicide data in the city. Cool. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? And for my colleagues that were out the room, we are going through internal service funds, sinking fund commission, revenue bond debt service, debit service revenues and expenditures, debt service, unvoted tax supported obligations, and that is it. Any other questions? Hearing none, let's move forward. Saban, can you read uh, the rainy day reserve? Page 351. Rainy Day Reserve Fund, ending balance, 2022 unaudited, 65,832,235, 2023 budgeted, 65,832,235, Madam Chair. Thank you. Can you repeat the page? 
351. Chief? Uh, through the chair of the council, happy to answer any questions. Uh, I think as we've discussed uh, on prior days, we are not anticipating uh, in, the, in the mayor's estimate any deposit into the rainy day fund. We did make a deposit of $20 million uh, in 2022. Any questions? Councilwoman Spencer? I know, thank you, Madam Chair. I know the CFO has shared us shared this with us before, but our, our total balance in our rainy day fund, how many months of city operations does that cover through the chairwoman? <laughs> the, the, through the uh, chair to the council member, the figure that I'd given before was the rainy day fund, the payroll reserve, and our, and our unencumbered cash balance. Um, the rainy day portion of that is... Uh, approximately 30, uh, 34 days 34 is the day. rainy day portion of our total um, cash picture. And then uh, can you repeat through the chairwoman the figure for the total cash picture? Uh, I was, I don't know, roughly, I, I, I don't want to. That's okay. Let me follow up. With I question. think no. I thought I it was it just down in a different notebook. Absolutely. And yeah. then do we? And I know this has been said prior in our uh, hearings as well, but is there the a, a target in terms of how how much we want to be, how many days we want to cover, or um, thoughts towards future contributions to the rainy day reserve? Yeah, I, I think uh, through the chair to the councilwoman, in 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 an ideal world, uh, we keep the rainy day. Uh, amount at the maximum that we're allowed under state law uh, and then when with, and then thinking about the other funds we keep the payroll reserve fund sort of in line with our um, with our liability that 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 fund is is designed to cover uh, but you know certainly acknowledge that those kinds of deposits are they're they're good to haves um, you know don't want to uh, crowd out funding for other you know Day -to -day, very, very important day-to-day -day services that we need to fund um, at the, you know, to the expense of the, these reserve funds. So it, I think it's a bit of a balancing act, and it's kind of when we're able to do it, we do it um, as, as best we can. Thank you. And the last question through the chair is, can, can you remind us what is the maximum rainy day balance allowed under state law? Uh, through the chair to the councilwoman, it's... Uh, 10% of the prior year's uh, general fund revenue um, that we're allowed to keep in that fund. Great, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman Spencer. Next up, I have um, Councilman Casey. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Chairwoman. <coughs> Chairwoman of the CFO, we have almost 66 million in our rainy day fund and an additional 90 million in our 27th pay fund. Where, where is that money? Uh, through the chair of the councilman, it's in our commingled um, Deposit depository accounts, uh, and by that, what I'm asking for is it's sit, it it just sits in a bank somewhere, correct? Uh, through the chair, uh, that is correct. We uh, the treasurer uh, who was here earlier, he and his staff manage that money uh, under state law and the charter. We have very strict limitations as to how we can invest the the city's deposits. Um, that said, we do have some ability to invest, so we in. The more recent past, we've been investing in Treasury security, U.S. Treasury securities, uh, as a way to generate more revenue for the general fund. And then, Mr. Chairman, the CFO, that was my second, my second question was that can this money generate additional dollars through interest or reinvesting it or or whatever? Uh, through the chair, that yes, it can, and uh, that uh, interest revenue that it does generate goes into the unencumbered cash balance of the general fund. Does not. Uh, as we've set it up, does not <coughs> go back into the payroll reserve or the rainy day fund. And then, as to Ms. Madam Chairwoman, to the CFO, does that happen on a yearly basis, six months, three months? How often, how often do we pull the interest or what we've made off that money out? Yep, uh, through, the, through the chair. Uh, it depends <coughs> on how that money is being invested. So um, when we're talking about Treasury securities, the, in, the income comes in uh, both at uh, 
you know, the periodic interest payment dates under that, that treasury bond. Uh, and then also, you know, there could be moments where we're, uh, if we're selling that security early for whatever reason, there, there might be investment gains that come into the general fund as a result. Um, but typically we'll see interest income paid on whatever the interest payment date is for that security. So it could be June 30th, it could be September 30th, it, it depends on, on what we have. Okay, and then one last question, Madam Chairwoman, to the CFO. In this book here, does it show anywhere how much the city has made in 2022 in the income from just our rainy day fund or our 27th pay fund or any other money that we have sitting invested somewhere? Uh, through the chair, uh, it, it on page 34, uh, where we have uh, investment income. Okay. Uh, it shows all of the investment income of the city. It, it's not broken out by rainy day fund or payroll reserve, but it's okay. all of the, the income we generate from our investment activities. But the investment income is money that we have sitting somewhere, just sitting, it's, working it's the for interest. us. Yeah, right. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you, Councilman. Next up, I have Councilman Palenza. Thank you. <coughs> Chairperson, and <coughs> on, um, to follow up on the, again, special revenue funds, under the Cleveland Stadium, uh, did he touch upon that already? Did you touch upon the Cleveland Stadium on page 352? No. Okay, so uh, to, the, to the director, again, just uh, explain the, the receipts in, expenditures out, and then the uh, the the net. Ex explain. I'm I'm trying to understand that better. Uh, through the chair, uh, the receipts in would be uh, a combination of syntax revenue and general fund transfers. Okay. And then the expenditures would be a combination of debt service and uh, capital repairs. Okay. And then that leaves a deficit of fifty-eight thousand. That's, that's correct, uh, and that's offset by the beginning balance in the Cleveland Stadium Fund that we had uh, in, uh, at the beginning of the year of $23,496,623. So is, is the, um, the $23 million, that's the remaining balance, and that is to cover debt service? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. The, um, the beginning balance, uh, um, the three million, explain the three million nine seven, nine seventy. Oh, um, that is the change in the in the that that is the difference between the twenty twenty two beginning balance and the twenty twenty three beginning balance. Okay. So I'm sorry, we, just, are we still general, at the rainy day fund? Go ahead. Is it, are we still in the rainy day fund? No, special revenue fund. We haven't got there yet. Huh. 352. Oh. So the, the general fund doesn't have to cover that, do we? No, we haven't. Or are we? Oh, yeah, we are. I'm sorry. Yeah. We are in the rainy yeah. reserve fund. Correct. Special revenue fund. So the, the general fund doesn't have to cover that deficit, do we? Uh, through the chair, the, the general fund is the primary contributor to the Cleveland Stadium Fund. I, I understand that. And, and so that, there, that, that deficit yeah. is simply the spend down of okay. the beginning balance. So we had asked with, uh, during the budget, and I think it was pre-budget as well, we had asked for the total dollar amount that we had paid uh, so far for the stadium for principal and interest. Did we ever receive that, that figure? To the staff, uh, and again, I would make that request again. What we have paid to date on principal and interest on Cleveland uh, Lakefront Stadium. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Councilwoman House. Okay, I'm just a little confused. Where are I thought we are? Where are we at? Rainy Day Fund, Rainy Day Reserve. Page 351. 351. Yeah. Okay. So I I, I was confused because. So is the special fund with the rainy day fund? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Is special revenue fund 
and rainy day all the same thing i mean the, tell me how this is through the just, through sorry. the chair the rainy day is a special revenue fund there are three four five six special That's revenue funds okay thank you um so just uh, um through the chair to the chief where are um how many financial institutions um, do we utilize for, for the holdings of these? The Chief. Through the chair, I believe we use Key, PNC, and Huntington. So, it, so that's Key Bank, PNC Bank, PNC and Huntington Bank, Bank, and Huntington Bank. Okay. I'm going to ask that because for the community, that's all I need to know. Well, because I, I feel like that's very problematic, and I'm just putting that parallel to what is the true value that the city of Cleveland is getting, specifically when it comes to um, housing and the other things. It's not the same, but it's the same. They have our money. And according to reports, they're not, at least two of the three are not doing right by our people. And so we may need to um, seriously reconsider where we are holding our money and funded. And I know there are, there's more, a deeper conversation, but it's a problem. So thank you for that. Chief. All right. Um, any other questions regarding Rainy Day Reserve Fund? No other questions regarding Rainy Day Reserve Fund. We'll move to non-departmental expenses, county auditor deductions, transfers to other funds, and other administrators. Page 346, county auditor deductions. The total expenditures 2022 unaudited, 2538686 2023 budgeted, 1,150,000. Page 347, transfers to other funds. Total expenditures, 2022 unaudited, 382,445,240. 2023 budgeted, 45,246,462. Page 348, other administrative, uh, total expenditures 2022 unaudited 21,439,461 2023 budgeted 21,995,334 Mr. Chairman Okay, thank you Chief the, Through the chair, happy to answer any questions Okay So you guys process our membership to all of these organizations through the to the to the chair, that is correct. What about the Greater Cleveland Film Commission? Is that not in here, or is that not an other professional dues? That's is that something we just fund each year out of economic development? Uh, through the through the chair, we'd have to look into that. Th this is certainly not the exhaustive list of memberships that the city has. These are these are ones that kind of span beyond a single department. I know that ED and other uh, departments do also have appropriations for certain uh, organizations. So uh, we, we, we can look into that. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding uh, this uh, line? I have just one. Councilwoman Santana, Councilwoman House. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just quickly on page 346, mm -hmm. right? Board of Election Expense, can you just explain that? Yes, uh, so through the chair to the councilwoman, in 2022, we were billed for the costs of the 2021 elections, uh, which as we all, everyone knows, were citywide. Uh, and so that, that's why the 2022 line item is much higher than what we're seeing uh, as projected for 2023. Got it, thank you. And just on that point real quick, I know I got a couple of points. So we anticipate possibly going to the ballot this year for a couple of things. So is that budgeted into this? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Cordick can address that. Through the, uh, to the chairman, we anticipate 150,000. Um, now, how this, uh, how, the, how this typically works is if, if there are elections, and there are multiple different um, ballot initiatives on the election. So if, uh, if there's a state initiative or a county initiative, then we, we would pay a third of, of that total cost. 
So unless there is a, a, a ballot initiative where there's just a city of Cleveland ballot initiative on, then we would pay full freight for that. However, if there are other municipalities, other government agencies, then we would split that cost. But if it's a citizen-led initiative, we're still responsible for paying it if it's, we'll pay full freight if it's uh, the city of Cleveland. To the chairman, yes, you're correct. Well, through the, through the, um, to the chairman, I would, I would add, I think this uh, certainly shows the value of uh, leveraging uh, other initiatives that are on the ballot that, that might coincide with whatever initiatives the city might want to uh, put forth as a way to mitigate the costs of, of holding that election. Well, we may have one for construction reform this year, and that's one of the reasons that I asked that, because I want to understand if we have to put something on there for construction reform. Do, are we planning appropriate for that? But that's something you and I can have a follow-up. Yeah, and, and as needed through the chair, um, we, we could address that at the transfer ordinance okay. uh, side of the equation if it turns out that uh, there is an, a city initiative on the ballot and there is not a county or statewide initiative uh, to offset that cost. Okay. I know Councilman Casey had a point and Councilman Harsh had a point. Life. So I got three points. Uh, just on, on that point, Mr. Chairman, we we know that we've got at least one election in one ward, right, coming up this year. Is that where the 150,000 is guesstimated for? So can you, t Mr. Chairman, to the CFO, then can you tell us what it would cost to just do the cost of one election in one ward? Through the uh, through the chair to the councilman, I think that's the the 150 that we're estimating uh, here is what we expect would cover the costs of the special election that will be needed this year. Um, beyond that, it's hard to. I think that's a little more difficult if we go citywide to project out because the the 2022 amount was our share of uh, what of an election that included other initiatives on the on the ballot as in addition to um, citywide. Okay, thank you. All right, Councilman Harsh and then and, Councilman Slice. On and, and through the chair on the same subject, so we have municipal race for judges' seats this year. Those are citywide and only citywide. Um, do the courts pay? I heard somebody say a third. Like we pay a third on uh, shared. Like, do the courts pay for their own elections, or do we pay for the courts' elections too? Uh, through the chair to the councilman, I think we'll have. To, I'll have to look into that. I do believe uh, the judges are also county officials and so when those items are on the ballot um, and there's the ju judges for example judges salaries are, are split between the city and, and the county so if you look in the book uh, the judge salaries are like thirty four thousand dollars thirty seven thousand yeah. dollars and that's not their for salary. municipal judges as well yes yeah. for muni okay. judges as well um so and, and to be clear the 2022 unaudited amount of 1.1 million, that was for the 2021 election, correct? Because there's nothing in there for 2021. Through the chair, that's correct. So if we divide 1.167 by 17, it comes out to about 68,000 per ward, not 150, but, um, you know, uh, nickels and dimes later, I suppose. Uh, I just want to be clear that it's fascinating, and it should be fascinating to everybody that we, as municipalities, pay for elections. It's not a service of the state. Mm -hmm. It's something we pay for. Thank you. Stipe on that point. Can we read other funds or are we just on the uh, we, we read all of them. All three. I had a question. It's not a point. It's a question. Uh, so I can come back on the list if you okay, want Okay, we'll that. make sure that we have okay. you on the list because this was pertaining to board budgets. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah, we read all three of those. So, so actually, you're up, Councilwoman House. Yeah, okay, through the chair to the chief. Um, can you talk about the, the county auditor and treasurer collection fee? Uh, through the chair to the councilwoman, that's the fee we pay to the county for uh, collecting uh, taxes on our behalf. And, and, yeah, and through the chair for the uh, triennial update of the, uh, uh, the appraised uh, value of property. Okay, so they collect... Explain it a little bit more. So through the chair, the county collects property taxes on our behalf. We do not collect property taxes. And so this is basically what we, we pay, pay the county for that for service. Doing, for doing the service. Okay. And then I guess this is a question to the chair. So 
because I just had a recent issue of, of um, um, a resident whose property, basically the tax lien was sold off, but they still live in the house. And so uh, I'm trying to get a, I know this is a county issue, but I guess trying to get clarification on what are some best practices of that. You see what I'm saying? Because I just feel like it's rough. Do we, do we, A, is that an issue that this body has taken up prior to or before or? I can't tell you if that in recent history, if it's been something. I know that Councilman Brancatelli, when he was here, had some of these kind of hearings that used to deal with some of this. Okay. But I can't tell you, like. I, I just didn't know, just in recently or whatever, if there was something new. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you. Councilman Charles Slight. Uh, so on 347, uh, the transfer to street construction, uh, $8.5 million estimating, but then on page 358, the transfer in under street repairs, $11 million. So can we just clarify, if I, and if I miss something during that discussion, I apologize. <coughs> Through the chair of the councilman, there are other identifiable funds that we're going to use to make that difference up. So the general funds contribution is $8.4 million. And whether we use additional bond funding or um, the strategic priority funds, then that's going to cover the $11 million that you see in streets budget. Okay. I, I, I just follow up. Uh, just I, th I think I know the answer, but just to be sure, it looks as if that's a new strategy. Historically, that was all general fund for this transfer? Through the chair to the councilman, yeah, historically, it, it always has been funded by the general fund but we're trying to identify other ways in order to mitigate the general fund's liability for transfers. Okay, uh, briefly, do you know, uh, could you expand on what those sources are? I, I ask because I know block grant, for example, is street resurfacing is an eligible use, but that's not, it's not an eligible use in all parts of the city. So I, I wanna make sure that we are not hamstringing ourselves uh, by going for an alternate funding source that isn't gonna be broadly available. Yeah, through, the, through the chair, that's, we certainly don't wanna do that. I, my, my expectation is that we'll make up that balance with uh, debt that we issue later in the year. Thank you. All right, any other questions for non-departmental expenses? Councilwoman House. Councilwoman Moore. Oh, sorry, am I up now? Okay, so I was just trying to get on the list. Um, just uh, briefly, <laughs> I'm so sorry. You have explained this to me multiple times, and I, I, I just want to make sure I really understand it. The capital outlay on page 347, the transfer to other funds, um, the, that previously was you know, 13 million, 15 million, then last year it was 6.3. And I realized, the thing I understand is that every year we don't budget very much in that category. And then every year we come back and either through the transfer ordinance or in part through reconciliation through the RIT funds, that's where those appear. But can you go over, can you go over that one more time and also what is, where that money go, what's actually spent on when it's transferred to capital projects? Chief. Uh, through the chair to the, the councilwoman, <coughs> that, that's, that's right. So I think oftentimes this transfer is actually dealt with uh, either in the transfer ordinance or the supplemental ordinance. Um, it, you know, usually we're not looking in the mayor's estimate to uh, make uh, significant transfers there. Um, and, and it's for, uh, you know, the kind of capital work that you would expect, right? Streets, um, demolition, uh, things like that, which have been the recipients of uh, transfer and supplemental ordinances in the past when there's been excess cash that was not anticipated. Okay, thank you. Um, and then in terms of the interfund subsidies, um, we've gone over the rainy day fund, uh, the stadium fund, subsidy to street construction, uh, council member Slife just asked about, um, the transfer to other subclasses, that one has the large allocation from last year that was moving ARPA into its special sub fund. What are we anticipating is the 6.9 million there for 2023 through the chair to the director? Through the chair to the councilwoman, we're anticipating in that 6.9 million 
$3 million to economic development to, 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 to have as available in their cash position for, um, for their needs of enticement, and uh, $2 million to the Cleveland Browns for capital repairs. And there's also a JSIP agreement that we have with Sherwin-Williams for 750000 So that gets you to the lion's share of that $6.9 million. And sorry, say that Sherwin-Williams one one more time. What is that? 750000 from a JSIP agreement. For, for the what agreement? Sorry. Through the chair, job creation. Job, oh, the job program. creation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Um, and the five million was for economic development for incentives, or uh, yeah, th uh, through the chair to the councilwoman, it's three million uh, for ED to have for its JSIP, its re on regular ongoing JSIP. Program. The JSIP, oh yes. yes, and that's the acronym for the Jobs Incentives Program. That's, that's correct, because the way the way it's presently set up, uh, the, the recipient of the um, incentive actually gets a cash payment from the city for the incentive. Um, it's not an actual income tax credit where, you know, at the end, when you're filing your taxes, you get a, a refund. Um, there's an actual cash transfer to between the city to the recipient of the credit. The, the, tra the cash transfer comes on the front ends? Uh, correct. Fascinating that we give that to Sherwin-Williams <coughs> and to almost, almost nobody else. Um, I, I'll briefly ask, because if I recall, the, the Sherwin-Williams JSIP was one of the larger ones that we've ever passed, um, but we're, we're bulking up that fund with almost $3 million. What, what are we anticipating that to be spent on in the next year through the chair to the director? Through, through the chair, I think, uh, unfortunately, that's a, a question uh, better directed at the economic development. But I, you know, in general, uh, I'm aware that for relatively large scale economic development projects. It's, it is an enticement that the department uh, provides to help get transactions done. So, you know, I think generally when a company is considering moving into the city from either, um, from, well, from anywhere outside of town, uh, it's an incentive that will be made available to entice that company to move into the city to help offset the costs of the, of the project. And I thank you through the chair, um, Economic Development has stated that they intend to spend $3 million in upfront cash payments for jobs incentives programs in the next year? Uh, through the chair, that's correct. And they did, uh, in fact, spend that uh, amount completely in 2022. I see. And that is, we don't see that broken out because it's sort of in this larger bubble of the ARPA allocation that's under that same line, line item. Um, you know, I, I, I find those pro those um, enticement programs sort of interesting. If uh, if our policy team could take down a request to know where the last year's three million was spent, through what, um, if some of it was broken out directly for Sherwin Williams, it seems like there's some other smaller ones in there. I'd be interested to know where those go. Um, so thank you, thank you for helping me uh, understand that transfers to other subclasses. Uh, we of course have our debt service fund. We've discussed the transfer to school recreation fund. This is a, um, a, a, a vestigial sort of uh, transfer from the convention center sale. Um, what, what was the first million in there for? The first million was separate from the convention center, through if the, I recall, through the chair. Through the chair, the first million was uh, an obligation the city took on in connection with the gateway. Oh, the uh, gateway project. OK. And is that at all mirrored by, um, do we have any transfers in from our, any of the gate, other gateway partners to help cover that through the chair? Th through the chair, no. Okay. Um, all right, so then uh, l lastly, we have just some smaller subsidies to the cemetery, which we've discussed, parking facilities, uh, the golf course we've discussed at length, the Westside Market we've discussed. The last one is the convention center. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that obligation and why it's, why it's growing through the chair to uh, the director? Through, through the chair to the councilwoman, that's for a public auditorium. Um, and it, I think from a, on a budget to budget basis is not much larger this year than it was last year. Uh, but as you see, the actual results have been um, a little lower than, than that budgeted amount. 
Um, so I think the, the budgeted amount reflects kind of what we hope to be the operations uh, or what, what um, Public Works hopes to be the operations at, uh, and the activity at Public Auditorium and, and reflecting the subsidy at that level. Um, but it, it may well not come in at that level. Okay, got it. Thank you. I was led a little bit astray by Convention Center. I thought it was a separate, um, separate item. So I think that covers all of my questions. Yeah, with that, I yield. Thank you. All right, thank you. Great line of questions, Council Lady. Uh, do we have any more questions regarding the non-departmental expenses? Seeing none, let's move to the anchor leg of the hearing, restricted income tax. Uh, Ms. Saban? Page 351, restricted income tax fund, 2022 unaudited ending balance, 5,281,356, 2023 budgeted, 606,356, Mr. Chairman. All right, uh, Chief, any comments? Uh, through the chair, other, nothing other than as just to remind everyone that the restricted income tax is one ninth represents one ninth of the city's overall income tax collections. These funds never hit the general fund uh, and are, are routed directly by CCA uh, to the restricted income tax fund. Okay, just a quick question. The money that we used to put for the age, the council age friendly home program, is that where the 2000, is that why the 2022 is at 5.2 million? Just trying to make sure I understand that. It's 5.2 million that we had last year. Uh, through Where the, do you usually have that at? Where do you usually keep that at? Through the chair, it's my understanding that that, that age-friendly home money was general fund uh, over the years. So you and moved not that out of writ and put that into general fund because that's where we used to get it from. Mr. Gentile. To the chair, to the chair, uh, the first year I think it was out of restricted, which was several years ago, <laughs> but the last several years have been out of the general fund. Okay, uh, yeah, sure, one second. So, okay, all right, well, that's a conversation I wanna make sure we have because I know that also we used to do the um, special capital improvements that we used to get uh, for councilmen or council members in each areas as well that we used to be able to work with, but we'll have that conversation, okay? All right, uh, Councilwoman Spencer. Thanks. I just wanted to to have a point on that. Um, is there is there what was the thinking behind regarding AFIP because it's such an important program to all of us? What was the thinking behind not using restricted income tax and and pulling from general fund for that program? Mr. Gentile, through the chair of the council person, we, we had some concerns with the eligibility of using RIT for age friendly. General funds less restrictive, so we decided, you know, in consultation with the law department, that the better source to make it more flexible would be the general fund. Council lady, thank you. Then this is an opportunity to understand what are the restrictions on the restricted income tax fund. We could through through the chair to the, the council person. Generally speaking, it, it's. Restricted income tax is generally geared towards city-owned property. And that, that's where, you know, the city became a little bit concerned, the law department. So that's, that's when that decision was made to put it, put it back in the general fund, which, again, does not have as tight as restrictions. Because restricted income tax is based upon uh, what was passed. Is it's one-ninth of income tax. It's supposed to be used for capital improvement and or debt service. That's the two sources that this could be used for. So that's, that's the reason, thank you. Thank you, thanks Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, any other questions regarding restricted income tax? Rick. <coughs> All right, well, seeing no other questions, I believe that this year's 2023 Finance, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion uh, Committee is adjourned. <laughs> and I was looking around. Did everybody see me looking around like I'm giving everybody one more chance? 
How are you going to proceed? Actually, how are you going to proceed, Mr. Chairman? I was just going to wonder how you're going to proceed now with um, a reconciliation. That's what I'm wondering. Okay, so let me um, give some. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for. But um, just a couple of things. And first of all, let's uh, thank uh, the finance director and also Mr. Mr. Gentile. Appreciate you guys. We made it. We made it. We got through. I um, know y'all thought we were going to have a couple of Saturdays, Sundays, or midnights, but uh, we found a reason to keep Mr. Jones in Ward 1. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so uh, here's what we have is on uh, Monday, we are going to have a caucus. We okay. will basically be able to debrief. I do want to share this. with that. Caucus is going to start at 12, okay? But I want to be clear with everybody, we... Um, we, you know, are going to try to stay as close to a structurally balanced uh, budget as possible. Um, what I've asked the actual uh, policy team, which we're going to be talking in a moment, is um, I want to identify areas where we can identify potential cuts first and foremost, if there's areas that we recommend potential cuts, and then after that, recommend where there are areas where we want to see potential um, increases. We're not going to do what we did last year. It would be impossible. Uh, let's remember this council told the administration we wanted them to bring us back a balanced budget um, and a structurally balanced budget. And we're not going to be able to run up another $62 million um, over un uh, imbalanced, structurally imbalanced budget like we did last year. So keep that in mind as you think through and pour through everything, where there can be cuts, where you would suggest any recommended additions, and then uh, we'll have that conversation along with some recommendations from Guy as well as um, Joe Titran on Monday in caucus. I also have asked them to give us some doomsday scenarios. What do doomsday scenarios mean? I've asked them to give us how much would it be if we added a certain amount of police officers back into the budget, uh, just so that you can understand those numbers. Mm -hmm. How much would it be if we had to try to add age-friendly and where could we potentially do that? Right. And then what if we did that and how that looks, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're gonna give us some of those scenarios and have some of that prepared for us on uh, Monday. And then once we go through that caucus process, uh, then uh, that's when the leadership team and myself will start to uh, sit down with the administration and figure out how we want to move forward. I do want to suggest as well that Councilwoman Moore and Councilman Harsh have done a significant amount of work on their own to put together some very, very good tracking tools. Um, they've been willing to share it with anybody, and I don't know if they want to speak on those, but both of them have done a, you know, I've been watching them closely, but both of them have done some very good tracking tools that might be helpful to some of you on your own um, on your own time. Is that for a four-legged or two-legged critters? That's what I want to know. <laughs> okay, Count, okay, okay. Count, yeah. Councilwoman Moore. And All right, hold on one second. Councilwoman Moore. Okay, uh, we're going to adjourn, so then okay. we'll get to the next steps, okay? Because right. this committee meeting is done right. and finance right. is done. Hold on one second. Yeah. All right, so uh, this committee meeting of finance, diversity, equity, and inclusion is adjourned. Thank you. All right. All right.